Hi there, everyone. Thanks for watching. Like always, we hope you're having a great day wherever you're joining us from. We've got a lot to get to today, including um, Portage's girls golf team is at a WIA Division I regional in Reedsburg, um, where they're trying to, to advance to Tuesday's sectional in Madison. And um, we also are going to you know, give a rundown of the prep football schedule tomorrow, um, including a look at what that means for playoff and conference title chases. But first, it's going to be hard to match what's going on in Madison this weekend where the seventh ranked Badgers will host number eight Nebraska in the Cornhuskers Big Ten debut. Um, Travis, you know, it's really, really going to be um, a litmus test for the Badgers who looked great getting off to a 4 0 test, but haven't had a game right. quite like this yet. Yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to see because, I mean, everyone kind of thinks Wisconsin might be good enough to win a Big Ten title or even be in a national title picture. Everyone thinks that quarterback Russell Wilson might be a Heisman candidate, but we really don't know because they really kind of beat up on four pretty weak cupcake teams to get to this point. So finally we get to play, you know, the Badgers get to play a real opponent. So I'm going to be just excited to see how they stack up and, you know, if they, you know, knock Nebraska off the field, then then it's probably time to get excited if you're a Badger fan. What stands out to me about this game, aside from the fact that the Badgers are 10-point favorites, I really, I really can't believe that, but, um, you know, that really doesn't matter to the game anyway. What stands out to me about this game is it really seems like a great opportunity for the Big Ten to get started on repairing its image. It's taken a hit in the last decade or so, um, with losses to the SEC in national championship games and poor bowl records. And, um, and now with traditional power Nebraska joining the league, really seems like a chance for the Big Ten to close that gap on the SEC. They might not ever be able to truly match the top to bottom depth in that league, but a chance to get started closing that gap. And, um, and the, Badger, um, the Big Ten has really done a, a great job staying above the fray in the recent um, mixing of teams in conferences, Texas, Oklahoma, et cetera, trying to get to the Pacific Conference. Texas A&M was mad at the Big 12, so they left for the SEC. And the list really goes on and on. And throughout that, the Big Ten has kind of stayed pat with Nebraska joining last summer, and they've spent basically the last year really fostering um, their, their new image. So this game, two top 10 teams at a great venue and in prime time, with historical significance, really seems like a great opportunity for for the league to get started. It's, it's you know it's going to take a lot more than this one, but a great start yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. And speaking of beginnings, Portage's girls golf team, like I mentioned, to start trying to get started today towards their first um, state berth. It's going to take a top four finish at that regional today, and and if they can do that, a top two finish at the sectional on Tuesday. Um, teams in that in that regional today, along with Portage, Madison Memorial, Madison West, Verona, Mount Horeb, Reedsburg, and Wanakee, and Middleton as well. Um, and you know, and Portage and, and Wanakee probably the favorites, maybe along with Middleton to win this regional. Um, so it shouldn't be too much trouble. I mean, I guess you never want to take anything for mm -hmm. granted, but it shouldn't be too much trouble for Portage to finish in that top four and move on. But some things to pay attention to anyway. Portage and Wanakee finished um, one stroke apart at the Badger Conference Tournament in Evansville last week with mm -hmm. Portage edging, edging Wanakee by, by one and winning the overall Badger North Conference title. Portage's 374 was not up to their admittedly high expectations, just for perspective. Their program record for 18 holes that they set earlier this year was 337, so they were well off that. Whichever one of these two teams can show up today, golf well and, and hopefully advance, probably is going to get some momentum yep. for um, Tuesday's sectional. So it'll be fun to pay attention to and see. Um, you you got to figure Portage really wants to get through this regional and, and give themselves an opportunity to compete to go to state mm -hmm. on Tuesday. That meet Tuesday will be, if the Warriors can advance, will be at Odana Hills in Madison. I'll be at um, Reedsburg Country Club later today for, for that regional, so look for coverage of that in tomorrow's paper as well. Like mm -hmm. I said, it should be fun. Yep. 
Speaking of the postseason, we're not quite there yet for prep football, but we're getting close. Mm -hmm. And that means week seven, eight, nine, now as we get going here, um, a lot of conference title and mm -hmm. playoff implications in yeah. all of these games. Travis, why don't you run down what's going on? There? Yeah, the big game on Friday uh, probably is uh, Partyville will be traveling to play uh, Oshkosh Lords in Oshkosh. And uh, Partyville's 3 0 in conference. They've won 44 straight conference games. But uh, this is probably going to be their toughest uh, conference test of the year. Uh, Oshkosh Lord is also 3-0 in conference and 5-1 and overall. So this is, this is going to be the game. This probably will decide who's going to win the conference. And, I mean, this is going to be part of those toughest game, I think, in the regular season. So uh, it's, it, it's just going to be a big game, and uh, whoever comes out of it, I think, is going to be the conference champion. Um, Montello, Princeton, Green Lake is also in the mix. They got uh, one conference loss, and they'll play at Partyville the following week. So Partyville's got two big games coming up, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, in the Capital North, we got Lodi and Point Adder, both 1-1 one one in conference. That means they have to win two of their final three games in the conference. I think they both are good enough to do that, but they're going to play each other in the last week of the season, so neither of them can can probably afford to slip up on the way. Um, Westfield is kind of surprising 2-0 and in the South Central Conference. That means they only need one more victory in their final three games to become uh, playoff eligible, which would be huge for them. They haven't been in the playoffs since 1997. But before you get too excited, they have to travel to Nakusa this week, and they're 5-1 and overall. And in the last week they play Watomo is also 5-1. and But the good news is, in between those two games, they host, or excuse me, they play at Adams Friendship, and Adams is 0-6, so that might be the game they got to win to get it done. So we'll keep an eye on them and see how they do. Uh, Rio is 3-1 in the Small Trailways Conference. That means they are playoff eligible. They have a good shot, I would say, of continuing their out playoff streak, although they do got some tough games uh, coming up. They play Johnson Creek on Friday, and Johnson Creek is undefeated in conference, so that'll be a tough one. And they also play at Houstisford on the last week, so... They got some tough games coming up, but it uh, looks like they're probably going to be headed to the playoffs. Uh, otherwise, there's uh, Cambria Friesland has been eliminated from the playoffs. And Portage, I guess, technically is still alive. They got to win their last three games, but uh, included in those games is a matchup uh, next week with the state champion, Wanakee, and uh, they've been kind of rolling through everyone. So Portage is probably not going to the playoffs this year. So that's kind of the rundown on the uh, conference football. Certainly some interesting scenarios to follow. I'm especially intrigued by this, this two-week stretch for Partyville, like you mentioned right off the bat there in your rundown um, with those two games. I'm, I'm really excited to see how Partyville gets through those two games and if they can um, keep that conference title streak mm -hmm. alive. I know there were some questions with the coaching change, you know, whether or not that would matter. But yeah. here we are, weeks seven and eight, and Partyville's you know, right in position to do it like they always do. Yep. Anyway, I don't have any bad jokes this week, Travis, so I'll brainstorm and hopefully have some for next week. Until then, everybody, take care.